tune in once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second round of the Precision Racing League's Pacific Championship Season 7. You saw there a mistake in qualifying, and uh, it took quite a few attempts to uh, get qualifying going because so many disconnections happened before anyone could get a lap in. Bam, bam, bam. Three people gone. 16 players started, 13 remain just a couple of seconds into the first qualifying attempt. And uh, that continued for ages until finally, 50 minutes after we were scheduled to start, Danny takes the second pole in a row. And uh, well, no one really getting their per PBs in that session. You should, you should see there that if uh, either Danny or I got our PB, it would have been ahead of her whole time there. But alas, we were unable to match that from just half an hour before the session. And uh, she gets a second pole in the row. And uh, Dubsy is second position. So a pad user in front, not good news for us. But we are third. And uh, not too far away from the front of the grid. Time to get going finally. We've lost a couple of people in the process. But on we go now. And we've got a really good start there, in fact, slightly better than Dubsy, and both of us with a better start than Danny. She has already moved over to the left of the fin, and there's a bit of contact there uh, between Dubsy and Danny. We're down the inside, and all of a sudden lag central happens. She disappears, she's, off, she's, like, she's actually spun off to the left. I get a penalty, even though I tried to avoid, and I've lost positions as well. But if I go down to turn four and cut to the swap around the outside. We get shunted in the back by a force India and we take out cart dude. Sorry about that. Not a lot I could do but now we're down to tenth position so could this start get any worse than this? The lag, the disconnections, the time it's been until we got to this point, but boom Spinning a uh, Williams and a McLaren, we get a puncture there. Uh, a couple of laps later, we lose a half, and uh, style and, and uh, the condition for the mass disconnection is six people to disconnect uh, within a lap, and that's three, I believe. We'll just follow this and see if any more go, and uh, if we need to restart the session, which would be a blessing for us, as I was quite uh, PO at the time, and that's four. And um, wanting to restart anyway due to the lag, obviously that wasn't to be. But would there be a restart? There's five, Daddy gone, and one more required. Who's it gonna be? It's me. <laughs> so that was lucky. But that there proved that I didn't like uh, leave the session on my own accord. But on the restart there, we've already lost a couple of people, but not quite enough to warrant another restart. And a very strange restart in here that Dubsy's slowed down a lot at the last turn. I've overtaken him, but I realise I shouldn't have overtaken him before the light. So I'm about to let him back through. And uh, I move over here and back off to let him back through. But uh, just have a look at Danny. She just disappeared from the lead. And we found out then that she was actually never in the, f in the um, first position as she should have been. And so... The uh, start was waved off and we tried again the next lap. That was actually complete lag. Anyhow, off we go finally. Starting the race way later than we should have. And Dubsy's through there into the lead. And uh, we're going to try and follow these two. Uh, the, the remaining. Uh, Challenges really because Stalin used a losing connection to Mercedes drivers who were very strong in the opening round, including the winner, Stalin. So, uh, unfortunate for their championship hopes. But now you'll have seen there that Dubsy quite contentiously was weaving on that previous straight. Stewards looked at it afterwards and he was penalised for that. 
that's actually why this video was so late in being uploaded. I wanted to see what the result would be before I commentated on this to see what I would, who I would say actually won the race. And you see there's a slight collision there between Dubsy and Danny. Danny slightly misjudging how uh, fast or slow, in fact, the pad user has to take that corner. And that's bottled me up and Mouse coming down the inside but managed to hold it around the outside there. And uh, remain in third position. But we see Dubsy trying to get away so it's time to overtake Danny. She seems to be slightly struggling in these early, early stages and the DRS assist and we have passed our teammate into the second position and it's pad 1-2 at the moment, that's slightly odd and not what we expected but on lap 6 I decided to pit because it looks like it's time for the intermediate tyre and uh, Dubsy did not pit, in fact even Danny pitting this lap stacking with me and it looks like we made the right choice just emerging in front of the Williams driver but he's right on us now He's going to try and make a move around the outside. He stuck it. We're going to stick in there on the inside. And we just brush. Uh, again, wheels there, the side walls. And now he's weaving a lot again. Trying to break the draft as he did earlier. And uh, we're going to send it down the inside here, are we? Yeah, well, there's a little bit of contact. And we're going to chuck it down the inside there. What an angled move that was. And back into the lead. And uh, on lap 10, we decide it's time for the full wet tyre. And both of us pitting on that lap. And on the out lap, I misjudged the grip through there. And Dubsy's come through with a little bit of contact again. And later in that lap, I really want to get back past. Oh, and he's clouded the ball out there. Not quite enough grip for me to continue my momentum through there, though. And he maintains the position at this moment. We send it back down the inside here. Back into the lead. But there's a collision. And we are off into the gravel. Both of us, in fact. And, uh... You'll see here that Murph comes flying through to take the lead, and we rejoin in second and third. Uh, that was also investigated by the stewards, but it was deemed to be um, insufficient evidence as to what exactly happened there. Uh, really, whether he was uh, turning me out of the corner, or whether I wasn't leaving enough space. A couple of laps later, though, we do go wide here, and a bit too throttled happy, and Dubsy's not needing a second invitation and is through there as we struggled in this sort of full wet phase. I decided I wanted to pit and then I decided I didn't want to pit there on lap 18 as Murph does. I'm um, not entirely sure whether it was time to go to the Inters yet but Danny at that moment telling me it wasn't as she had gambled on that and incorrectly uh, fitted the intermediate tyre for the time. Cart did pits though on lap 20, and uh, consecutive laps, Dubsy pits the lap after, and I retake the lead and uh, pit the next lap myself. So it'll be really interesting to see who made the right choice out of the three of us. In we go. Looks like Merv's following us. He has caught up on those fresher intermediate tyres that he put on halfway through that stint. Sorry, fresher wet tyres. And that's Cart Dude there, right next to us, so it looks like I've made the worst choice, W made the best choice, and uh, Cart Dude sort of in the middle, not really losing time, gaining a slight amount. And we're actually seven seconds back now from Dubsy, so a mistake there on the pitting lap. But uh, by the end of the race, we've caught him a lot. We are a lot quicker in the uh, non full wet conditions, but ultimately, it's the last lap, and there's not enough time to catch the Williams driver. And he's going to cross the line in first position though, and we are going to cross the line in second, but that will be good enough to win the race, because that 10 second penalty was applied. Second place. Brilliant driving. Brilliant driving. And uh, very happy with that. There are the championship standings after two rounds, and uh, roll on Bahrain. Open Jacko, see you next time guys.